So hi, everybody. I'm Terry Lupberger, and I'm a senior director with Altus Growth Partners and the Institute of Generative Leadership. And we're sponsoring the Women in Technology event coming up on June 15th, the Tech Tank. And we want to welcome you to the event. Hi, I'm Jan Irene Miller. I'm also a senior partner with Altus Growth Partners and a senior coach with the Institute for Generative Leadership. I'm delighted to be supporting the WIT organization with this event, as I had been a member for four years while I lived in the Washington, D.C. area. So welcome, everybody, and, um, and we're really looking forward to this event. Terry and I are going to talk a little bit about our experience in women in, uh, as women in technology and uh, what we're hopeful for for the organization. Yeah, great, great. So, uh, Jan Irene, you have a very long and great history <laughs> in technology. So, I'd love to hear and have our audience hear a little bit about uh, your experience and also the challenges that you faced. Oh, absolutely. So, um, yeah, so I began, I guess, uh, in my master's degree in business where I studied programming and systems analysis. And so, I immediately entered into the field of engineering in discrete manufacturing. And over the years grew from being a programmer and an analyst. And then I really had to choose, um, am I gonna be a technology expert? Mm -hmm. Or what am I gonna do with this path forward? So, you know, recognizing over time uh, what I wanted to do, I progressed from into project management and into marketing management and, and into being a director and having profit and loss responsibility um, and having a whole lot of fun all over the world, working with amazing people in science and technology. And some of the challenges that I had, let's see. There became a point where I had to decide if I was really gonna focus my learning on science and technology, or whether I wanted to progress to have influence with teams that were most likely smarter and younger than I was at the time. And so I made that move. Uh, and then I realized that if I was gonna make that move, I had a whole different path of learning that I needed to pursue. You know, that was about projects and projects all over the world with different kinds of cultures and different kinds of problems. And so it really directed my path of learning. And, um, and also, you know, then it was like, how do I influence how people are cared for in these organizations? That became a much different focus for me and a, a very different learning path. But um, I kept learning and became a coach and uh, studied performance management and leadership and was able to move into practices that really impacted my opportunities for creating real value for the organization and getting a lot more requests for more work. But I think the challenges were those like power and politics, mm -hmm. um, you know, where's the money going? How does what I do impact the bottom line? Um, those kinds of things, you know, what, how, how to navigate in those situations, yeah. Yeah. And um, a question that comes up for me is when you said, you know, I had to learn something new, right? Because I'm assuming it was not the technical pieces you were learning. No, you know, the thing I learned there was always to be able to make the assessment of who the best technical people were, mm -hmm. and then listening to them and bringing them together to make assessments about how to navigate. So really, the, the learning that I was doing was about making assessments of other people's competencies, mm -hmm. um, listening to the market forces that we were competing against and how to uh, make assessments of risk, um, how to coordinate very diverse teams. So at one point, for instance, we had a project where we had people working in several countries on the same project. What were the processes uh, to make sure that we all delivered and kept the customers satisfied? Um, just leading a team, uh, yeah. that, was, uh, that was huge for me, leading and growing a team, which actually became really the most fun for me. Mm. And then I remember the, when I really moved into the phase of having to negotiate for my budgets and being responsible for profit and loss, 
uh, and, you know, and the level of learning that I had to do there, just to keep being deeply connected to whether the decisions that I was making and that the team was able to make were actually going to financially be viable for the company. So that was all new learning for me. Wow. Wow. So Terry, I know you've had quite a, a number of years also in the technology field. Give us a little background about that. You and I were joking earlier. I, I think I'm probably one of the first women to ever get a degree in computer science. That's how, how long ago that was. So uh, I uh, went to George Mason, for those of you in the D.C. area, and uh, got a degree in business. And uh, then I was like, okay, uh, there's something else. So I, then I went over to Northern Virginia Community College and got a degree in computer science. Uh, and that's when we were feeding the cards through the machines. So that really dates me. Um, but both of those um, experiences gave me a really great um, entryway into my um, my first career that actually lasted for about 15 years. I was a financial systems analyst over at the Department of Treasury and uh, worked on a number of projects because at that time, now that computing was um, really coming on the scene and um, uh, we had a number of uh, financial systems, and I'm not kidding, where we still used pen and paper to keep records on index cards. And so we were automating quite a few of those systems. And uh, I got really good because I had the technical background and the training, um, and I communicated well with the end users. So my job was to sort of translate what the users wanted in a system and needed in a system and could then go communicate that with the technical people who I have to say at that time were all men. No, there, there were none. So, um, so I did that uh, fascinating experience. Uh, lots of scars, <laughs> lots of scars from things I didn't do so well, um, and uh, ended up leaving there after about fifteen years and starting a consulting company where I actually taught a program called Consulting Skills for Technical Professionals because what was missing at the time was the ability to communicate. You know, not in the jargon, not in that paradigm, but really to connect with the people that the um, that they were serving. And uh, so I was teaching those skills. So that's sort of the early background. And you know, ever since I've been, I've been a coach for twenty years now, and coach quite a few people in the, uh, you know, with technical backgrounds who want to move up in the organization. 